Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is good uh, to be with you all here on Thursday night. But I have a special guest, which I will share more about in a moment. We're just gonna have a conversation tonight. Hannah doesn't always get to show up at journey events, journey things, but then just for us to have some some time of just encouragement tonight, some scripture, some prayer. Uh, there e there might even be a song showing up at some point, and so if you're into some singing. Um, it will be it will be good. I love that we get to hang out on on these moments together uh, right here. So this is my wife Hannah. For those who haven't had a chance to meet, I wanted just Hannah to join us. She's my special guest. For those who were part of church on Sunday, I said I have a special guest on 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 Thursday night, and the secret is my my wonderful partner in life, uh, Hannah. Uh, but the reality is, she doesn't come to the journey on Sunday morning. She doesn't often show up. Uh, it's not because she doesn't want to. So I just wanted Hannah to be able to sh a little share about her. Um, kind of what work she's doing these days, but then also to ask her, like, how are you doing uh, in the midst of this season, Hannah? So Hannah, uh, tell the world uh, how you are and, and who you are. Yeah, well, thanks. I'm excited to be with you guys uh, here live tonight. It's a special treat. Sometimes uh, I'm bopping around in the house while Chris is doing these live videos, so it's fun to be on this uh, with you tonight. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so, yeah, why I'm not at the Journeys on Sunday mornings is that I also uh, am a pastor. So I serve at a church called Aldersgate Church in Mechanicsburg. I started there uh, officially in January. Uh, so I was able to be at the Journey uh, more this past summer and fall, but starting after Christmas, I really transitioned to start serving there more. So that, that has been fantastic. Absolutely love being a part of that church community and uh, the role I get to do there. So, mm -hmm. um, and I help a lot with communications and outreach as my my role at that church. So as you can imagine, this has been a busy season for a lot of churches, but I think my role is increase because a lot of what we do at the church right now uh, goes through communication. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure probably many of you are experiencing that in your own roles as well, just trying to figure out uh, how do we be more of a virtual presence, think more digitally. Maybe you've been experiencing like me, I think the first two weeks, I, my eyes like literally hurt <laughs> because I felt like I yeah. had so much blue light coming in all the screen time that the world has gone so virtual. But it's also uh, an exciting time to think about how to be the church differently in this season, how to connect differently in this season. In, um, perhaps slow down a little bit too and interrupt our routines and to change things a little bit. So it's been a little stressful, definitely anxiety filled. I can relate to some of the comments coming mm -hmm. in that it's just a really uncertain, unique season that we're all in. Um, but I also just am comforted by different relationships and creativity I've seen by God's presence in this. And I just want to admit um, and acknowledge uh, that mm -hmm. Chris and I in some ways speak into this from a certain level of privilege, if we're honest, like we haven't lost our jobs. Uh, we still are able to work since we're essential employees. Um, we are thankfully are still healthy. So that's not everyone's story. So I just really wanna acknowledge that our perspective is coming from that place, but I can see and acknowledge that a lot of you are coming from different perspectives and that's gonna change day to day. You said the days are long, but they're also, um, crazy and ever changing yeah. if that makes sense so that's a little bit about me and what it's been like in this season that's great and, and it's it's kind of fun for us because we're both pastors to show up to churches and 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 to come home i mean you can only imagine how much we talk about church how much we talk about faith how much we talk about like just our christian life and so um it's been it's been really fun to kind of have you on this journey and, and i would love for you just to share hannah i think you just say like we have a level of privilege right now and that there are some things that are like we're healthy, uh, we're thankfully still employed, uh, but like, what are some joys, right? Like, so two weeks ago in this slide, we talked about like the joy of the Lord is our strength. And like, how can we, in the midst of the chaos, what are maybe some joyful things that you're experiencing mm. in this season? Mm, that's great. I would say one of the top joys is when it's like a day like today, when it's gorgeous outside mm. and you can see spring and I like went for a run the other day and I could see the daffodils in new life. That is such a joy to me because I love nature. And one of the main ways I connect and see God is in nature. And so to see the promise and already evidence of new life, uh, in creation gives me hope that this is just a season, right? Like we are just coming out of a season of winter as in the world and the promise of spring is already coming. And so I apply that to also what we're experiencing right now, that this is a season. We don't know how long hmm. this season will last, but it's a season. And I, maybe because of my faith, I'm confident in even Easter coming, right? I believe in the power of the resurrection hmm. that from death or seasons, hard seasons in our life, new life 
comes mm -hmm. forth. So that's brought me a lot of joy. Um, I don't want to sound cliche, uh, but Chris has brought me a lot of joy in this <laughs> season. Um, he probably didn't even know I was going to say that, but he's just been very supportive. Um, we, as best, since we're both pastors, often we have a lot of evening commitments and we don't have as many in this season. So we've been able to cook together, eat together way more than probably any other season in our lives, in our marriage. Uh, so that's been a joy just yeah. to, to spend some more quality time with you. So I really appreciated that. So kind of that sense of deeper connection with some of the people closest to me. So. I appreciate what you said because just like even if you just look outside like the, the weather and just the relationships that like it's probably so easy like and, and I bet and I would love for you to share a little bit more like it's always so easy for us to like just kind of dwell on like the things that have we've lost like the things that have changed the things that like aren't the same that we miss and that we long for but so there is a sense of that right but there's a sense of like joy right that there are good things the weather is beautiful right uh, and at least in our case we're spending way more time than we've ever spent before and it has been hard and beautiful all at the same time and so it's been fun for us just to kind of navigate that a little bit uh, around kind of the new kind of rhythms of life and so like what what would you say are some significant things that have changed though uh for you and and maybe for us to think about like in the midst of change there's joy, but is it helpful just to name kind of the change that we're experiencing? So what would you say? Yeah, and you kind of were alluding to this, but I would actually say probably the biggest change I've experienced in this season is the change in my routine or my rhythms. Mm. Um, so especially the first two weeks of this, I was like totally out of my routine and mm. rhythms, is out of whack. I feel like this past week I've established mm. more of a sense of normalcy. Like, so I love to run. So it's really good for my body and soul to get outside and run, like I said, about nature. And so this morning I got up a little earlier and ran in the morning, which I would normally have done before this whole uh, everything started. And it was just so um, good to kind of get back to reclaim as much normalcy as I could and much routine and rhythm as I could. But I can only do that in pockets of my day because uh, now a lot of my routine includes uh, recording at different times. It's a new schedule or posting things at different times or being on different zoom calls or google hangout calls at different times facetiming also one of the other jobs i do is i teach at messiah college and messiah mm -hmm. college has been shut down um in this season so i had this rhythm a routine every tuesday thursday i would go to messiah and that doesn't happen anymore now i have to record the lectures and post that online so it's a whole getting used to a whole different way of life mm -hmm. a whole different rhythm and routine it's a big change for somebody yeah. like me who's more of a like a type a planned like everything mm -hmm. out um, which probably sometimes drives chris insane because i'm kind of like i need a schedule and a plan yeah. but that's that's been a big change for me. So yeah, yeah, maybe some of you can relate with that. I'd love to see some comments if you're like, oh yeah, my routine has been totally changed right now. Um, and maybe you're enjoying that or maybe you're freaking out about it. So, but that's been a big change for me. Yeah, that's really good. And I think it's like, there, there's some change, but what I, what I heard in that was not all change is bad. Right. Mm -hmm. So like there's a change of rhythm. And so it's how do we kind of re recalibrate in the midst of the season that yes, things are different, and thankfully, I was on a call today that it was helpful just to acknowledge that like every every person has been affected by this, right? And so there's a sense of solidarity that like not one of us has caused this on, on ourselves or this change or this loss or this change of rhythm, but that that's kind of a shared thing. And so we're all having to adjust, like you having to kind of adjust to kind of your life, uh, your new life and new, new rhythms and and more doing more things or doing less things or just trying to figure all of that out and. Um, and I wanted to share some kind of scripture with you, um, and uh, it, maybe it's helpful for you. Um, and, and one of my kind of most favorite passages of scripture is from Romans 8, and, and we just wanted to kind of talk about it with you, just kind of read it out loud. If you have your Bibles or have access to a phone or Google, just like Romans 8. Um, and I think there's some really good stuff. Like I would say that like one of the verses that we'll read is like my life verse. Uh, and so we can share a little bit about that, but we just want to kind of like read some scripture, share some thoughts that we have on kind of what stands out to us and what's kind of good news for us in the midst of this that may be encouraging uh, to, to you all. Um, so I'm going to invite Hannah uh, to read Romans 8, uh, 26 uh, to 28. In the same way, the spirit comes to us to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit itself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because it pleads for the saints consistent with God's will. We know that God works all things together for the good of the ones God loves, for those who are called according to God's purpose. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I want you to consider, even for those who um, are at home, is just to consider, like, what's kind of some good news in there and, and there's a couple of things that ha that stand out to me that I want to share and then I'll invite Hannah to do the same 
is that like I really like just the the power of verse 28. And and I've heard like preachers preaching this. I mean, I remember a sermon that I heard here in the city. I mean, like when I was in college and a whole sermon, I think 30 minutes, we're just talking this literally this this one verse. And and to me that I think there's so prevalent that we know that God works all things together for good. And I think there's a, a, some definite language in there that I, that I think is really powerful is that like, we know um, that there's something about like, it's not, we don't have to guess, we don't have to wonder, like that I think that it's helpful to say that we know that in the midst of kind of weaknesses and and, and moments of praying that we can know that, that God works all things together. Now, I think it's maybe helpful and Hannah can maybe share a little bit maybe later about like, that doesn't mean weakness doesn't happen to us, right? It doesn't mean like bad things won't happen to us, but it's like how, how we kind of live into that and respond to it and kind of experience God in that, like God works all things together for good for the ones who love God and for those who are called to according to his purpose. And so anything that kind of stands out to you uh, in that passage? Yeah, I think this passage is really powerful for me in this season because I don't believe that God caused any Mm -hmm. of this. I know there are probably different theological thoughts and ideas out there, and you guys might have different theological thoughts and opinions, but I think it's, for me at least, uh, really important just to know and believe that God is the source of life and love Mm -hmm. in the world. And so God didn't cause this Mm -hmm. season that the world is facing. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I think about Easter coming and Holy Week actually, Mm -hmm coming next week, we focus around the cross, right? And mm-hmm. at the cent- the center symbol of the Christian faith is the cross, right? Is a suffering instrument. It's a suffering God of God mm-hmm. suffering on the cross. And so what I take from that is mm-hmm. God is not necessarily a God who wants to deliver us from all suffering to all, like be this overprotective mm-hmm. helicopter parent, but God instead is a God who suffers with us, who will redeem our brokenness and mm-hmm. bring goodness out of everything, every situation we face, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so I think we're already beginning to see, probably maybe some of you are in your lives, God already bringing good out of this bad season. Um, But I think years from now too, we'll look back and see other evidence of God's good, how God redeemed even some of the worst situations in our lives. And I like what you said, in our collective lives, as as a globe, we are suffering together. And and like no greater solidarity probably have Mm -hmm. ever had, at least in our lifetimes, it's feeling like we're in this together, suffering together that God is also in this with us and suffering with us and is going to bring good out of us. Yeah. And so talk a little bit more of like, what does that mean for us? I love the image of the cross and that like the suffering nature of that in the sense of trying to bring redemption out of the evil and and the hardships and the pain of life. And so what what does that mean for us? Like, how can we experience that? Is it just an acknowledgement that God is a God of suffering with us? That like, when we suffer, God knows what that looks like. Cause, Cause God through the revelation of Jesus experienced that. And so is that part of it? Like, what does that relationship look like between us mm. and God in that? Yeah. I think part of it is it brings us a comfort to know that we're not alone in this, that God is always present. Sometimes even the most present, if you think about it in our sufferings, if you think about some of the darkest moments in your life, even leading mm. up to COVID-19, those might've been some of the times when you experienced God's presence in the most real way. Sometimes mm. not, sometimes we run far from God in the darkest mm. moments of our lives. But sometimes those dark moments can bring us closest to God, right? I have a great friend who likes to see in the darkest moments is when we can see the light most mm. clearly. Um, so sometimes in the darkest moments, we can sense God's presence, see God's presence in the most clearest way. So I think there's a sense of comfort in that, that we're not alone, that God is with us. But I would say also uh, hope and patience, hope mm. in the sense that as we know this is just a season and as long as the season goes, mm. But we hope in the resurrection, we hope in new life and power Mm. and restoration and healing Mm. eventually, but we might have to be patient to Mm. wait for that. But for me, without that, I I would be pretty hopeless. I would Mm. like, this is never going to end. What is Mm. happening? I I could just give away to anxiety and worry. Mm. But instead, I believe, no, this will be a season. God will redeem it and bring healing eventually. Um, And so I have this incredible hope and waiting in that. Yeah, that's really good. And, and I even think it kind of goes with like the, the passage, my, my very favorite passage. And if you've ever listened to me like preach ever, you might have heard me share this. And I think it kind of goes like, so that like, God will work all of these things and that God will bring deliverance. God will bring clarity. God will bring healing in the midst of all of this shared suffering. And and I think it's really helpful in like Romans 8, 31, that I think is powerful for us. Like, and, and then basically the, the passage I like is like, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, 
else, who can be against us? And I think even in this moment, it might be helpful that in the midst of the suffering, that God is still for us, right? So like Mm -hmm. that it's not about like God is just like away from us, acknowledging that God has suffered and that God knows what that looks like, but is distant. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just like nearness. Mm -hmm. It's that like that God is so for me Mm -hmm. and for you, Hannah, and for those who are listening right now, that God is for us. And there's a sense that we know that we can know and experience God on a really intimate level. What do you think of that? Yeah, absolutely. I think God is not only for us, but working through us. And mm-hmm. when I read scripture, it just amazes me that God, time and time again, chooses to yeah. work through humans just like us, right? Like yeah. the people in scripture weren't more special than you and I, right? Like God just chose to work through ordinary people like Moses and Peter and Mary. And um, I think God, I don't know, this would be a question to ask God someday, right? Why in the world, when you are the God of the universe, would you choose to work through broken, messed up humans like mm-hmm. us, as good and great as we are? Why does God choose to work through us? But I think uh, even in this season too, I'm praying for God to work through us to bring healing Mm. to the world. I believe, sure, that God can bring healing to the world in supernatural, powerful ways, but I think God miraculously chooses to work through us as humans to bring healing as well. Mm. So I'm praying for the researchers working on the vaccine, praying for healthcare workers, and praying Mm. for us to obey the government orders to stay Mm. at home (laughs) and to stop the spread of the virus. So um, I think God's not only for Mm. us and with us, but working through us mm. so almost it's like we have agency in this yeah. mm-hmm. like i think sometimes it's helpful to think about like oh well we have no role in this and in, in collective society and in, in, in sharing good and love in the world or even in the midst of like healing like we probably people are praying i assume maybe some we're praying for like answers and healing and and vaccines but there's a level of like we have agency in that mm-hmm. we have like a responsibility we have a role mm-hmm. to play in that that it's not this distant thing mm-hmm. And then I just want to share kind of the ending of this this passage uh, and uh, Romans chapter eight, verses 35 to 39. And then who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for slaughter. But in all these things, right, maybe we need to say in all of these things, all of the anxieties, all of the words that we have, in all of these things, we win a sweeping victory to the one who loved us. I'm convinced, this is Paul, that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death or life, angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or death or any other thing that is created. I just think that's really good news, Hannah, right? That like, that nothing can separate us from God's love, right? And so we talked about like that God is in it with us, wanting to create good, that God is for us and is suffering God, but also that in the midst of our suffering, that nothing can separate us, that there's no greater thing that could happen I could separate us. What do, what do you think of that? No, absolutely. And I mean, it connects with what we just talked about. If God is for us, if God is working through us, yeah. then nothing could separate us from God's love because yeah. God is not only all around us, but God is present in us, working yeah. through us. So nothing could separate us from God's presence. Yeah. And I, I hope that encourages you, like wherever you are, um, is that like in the midst of whatever you're going through, that God is for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that nothing can separate you from God's love. Nothing can separate you from like our corporate love as as pastors, as 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 people who love you. Um, that nothing can separate even you uh, from from God's love. That nothing in this world, nothing that is created, or no problem, or no disease, or no COVID nineteen can truly separate us from God's love. Yeah. So like Hannah, in this season for you, so like I came prepared one to talk about Romans 8, but like for you in this season, how are you trusting God in the midst of your own worries? Mm -hmm. Like, I I think maybe we need to acknowledge that like, I think we have worries, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we made the joke earlier that like, it's been new to like, be around each other so much, right? Like that was an adjustment for us. But like there's, we still have, both have anxiety. We both still have worry. And there are times that kind of pops up and bubbles up to the surface in probably really unhelpful ways, but we're having to navigate that. Um, so like, what would you say? How are you trusting God uh, in the midst of your worries? Yeah, I would say this has been an anxious time um, probably for all of us, right? And I can be prone to worry. And I think um, I'm even a bit of a, I'm not necessarily a germaphobe, but germ aware. So this season has been very difficult <laughs> <Germophobe>. for me <laughs> uh, because I'm like, there are like germs everywhere is what it feels like. And also I think a lot of us feel not only this fear of getting sick, but I also feel at least this like burden or fear of getting somebody 
else sick? Cause like, what if I'm a carrier and I don't even know it and get somebody else sick? Like, so I think we just all have a lot of uh, fear and anxiety right now. And that's real for me. I don't even know how this happened, but just the book of Philippians stood out to me last week in my own uh, devotional time. I was just reading through the book of Philippians and uh, read Philippians chapter four uh, verses six and seven. And I literally just wrote that down in my journal and I like, try to just return to it daily or like memorize that in my own life right now. So to not be anxious about anything, but Mm. in every situation, right? The good, the bad, Mm COVID-19 to pray to God with our prayer Mm. and our petitions, asking God to intervene. So praying to God and then to see the peace of God that transcends all understanding. That's so beyond what our human minds can, Mm -hmm. can comprehend will be, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. And so for me, what that's meant is like, Hannah, as cliche as it sounds, as many times have you heard <laughs> yeah. it, don't worry about it. That yeah. does absolutely nothing, right? We've all heard those talks about worrying is a waste of, t- of today. Like worry uh, doesn't eliminate t- uh, tomorrow of, of tomorrow's sorrow, but eliminates today of its power. So that's mm. that's important to me. We say that again. Yeah, worry doesn't eliminate the suffering and sorrow of tomorrow, but it does eliminate the mm. power of today. So if we wow. spend all day worrying it's not going to make a difference at all about the suffering and sorrow Mm. of tomorrow but it is going to limit the power and of today so worrying is really a big waste of time but i mean i'm very good at it maybe some of you are also good at it um and so instead of worrying i really just been trying to pray so when i think like okay i'm worried about this i'm worried about that i'm worried about that to really just pray right because paul says on all occasions uh to turn Mm. with requests to god and just to trust hopefully uh in god's power and presence that we talked about earlier yeah. uh, sustaining us in all things yeah that's really that's really good uh and, just, and maybe there's a power in that like that we have power today to control um and and maybe it feels like to you all that like every day it feels like there's some big thing like news um updates right like even our local representative, like every day on her uh, Facebook page, I see like she lists the the number of cases in Pennsylvania, the number of cases in our county, the number of deaths. And, and there's a sense of like every day um, we don't get to escape from this mm-hmm. and from the worry, from the anxiety, but that we have power, mm-hmm. right, uh, to not be anxious, but to instead trust in, 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 in God, right? Yeah, anything else you would say to that? No, I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to. Uh, pray more instead of worry, which, like I said, sounds so simple and cliche, but yeah. there is, I think, power in it. Um, yeah. I really do think that's true. That's good. So I, something that you all may or may not know uh, is that my wife is an accomplished singer. Oh, dear. And she, I think that I would say that she is the best singer that I've ever heard. Uh, and so if you've like had a chance ever at the journey or other places to hear her sing, like you you won't. But 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 there's a song that I think we've been even thinking about <laughs> recently Um it's just a, a familiar hymn um, called It Is Well. Uh, and I think even for us, like, how, how do we, even through song, kind of acknowledge that, like, it is well. And the, it's this power thing, right? Like, that in, in the midst of that, that, that we can declare today that it is well. Um, and so, so we wanted just to share this song with you all. And then after the song, we will spend some time just kind of praying um, together. Uh, so let us, let us share in, in this song. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well. May that be an encouragement to you uh, and invite you to to also sing and to also share that it is well uh, with my soul. And may that be our anthem, even today, even in this moment, that we can declare that, we can name that, and we can say, yes, today, this moment, it is well 
uh, with my soul. So thanks mm-hmm. for singing. So let's just spend some time just praying, Hannah, if that works for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll just start, and then if you don't mind ending. Sure. Um, and so we'll just pray wherever you are. Um, just I invite you to pray, uh, to experience some of God uh, in, in this moment. And so let, let's pray. And so God, thank you for um, the gift of technology, um, that even... Um, that we are far apart from uh, persons that we love, uh, that in this moment uh, we can um, come to you as your people. Uh, God, I just pray that you continue to remind us of the good news that we shared. God, that nothing can separate us from your love. God, that you are for us and um, God, that you are working uh, on our behalf uh, for goodness. Um, and so, God, thanks for Hannah. Thanks for allowing her to be my a partner in life. Um, and thank you for the ministry that she has the ability to lead and, and help lead at Aldersgate. And God, I just pray a blessing over her and her ministry. And God, would you continue just to, uh, in all of the all of the people who are joining us right now, God, and, and the unique things that they share and how, God, they're overwhelmed and, and they're so uncertain and there's so many things that are just getting in their way and um, and, and, and with kids and parenting and just trying to juggle it all. And, and God, even just right now, as I name those things, it kind of causes a little bit of anxiety, right? God, as, as, as I think about the, the the difficulty that people are experiencing right now with people losing jobs and, and kind of finding out new rhythms to life, God, I just pray that right now, that across technology in this way, that, that we're together and we're connected and that we can experience your love and your connection. And God, may even this moment of us connecting, that we can experience love just through this. Um, and so God, thank you for uh, the, the ability to be in, in this conversation in this time with you uh, tonight. God, I thank you for every single person who uh, tuned in tonight uh, to this Facebook Live video and everyone who will watch it in the future. And God, we just pray that you would take our words um, and make them yours. God, mm. that you would just offer hope to your world. God, we are in some desperate need of hope right now. And so, God, we just turn to you. Um, when we don't know what to do, God, may we just mm. turn to you and look to you. God, may we look to the cross um, as Holy Week approaches and know that you suffer with us. Mm. And so, God, thank you for the promise that we're never alone, that Mm. you'll never leave or forsaken or abandon us, God. And so, God, I just pray that you would make us more and more aware of your presence Mm. uh, tonight and in the days to come. God, draw us closer to you and draw us closer to the ones closest to us in our lives in this season. God, may it not be something that causes distance, Mm. but God, something that only strengthens our relationship with you and others in the long run. Mm. So, God, thank you for Chris thank you for his leadership. Thank you for the journey and for the gift that church is to the world right now. And God, just thank you uh, for Aldersgate as well. Mm. And just blessing it is to be a part of your kingdom in different locations. And God, Mm. we pray not just for the church here in this area and in this country, Mm. but around the world, God, as faithful followers of you, of you are trying to be the church in this difficult season. So strengthen us, equip us, give us peace and your strength for today Mm. and the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Hannah.